Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Long time to chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. <laughs> well, just because you see me one hour, it's not been long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make some tea. Mm. Mm. It's early here. It's eight. Wow, and you're in Hawaii. I am. And how long have you lived in Hawaii? Um, okay. Well, I started to rent a house like two years ago or so. Um, but then I didn't fully move. I was in between talent with my daughter and here. And, um, and I said, enough. I want to go be in one place. So we let go of the talent house. And, and um, I moved here. And I said, I'm going to stay here at least two, three months. But with the with the corona, it was not two, three months. It's been seven. Wow. Or eight. <laughs> yeah, so I arrived February. So March, May, June, July, oh, September, October, November. And I'm going for my eighth month without moving. Oh, that's a cool background. I love that one. Also, because when you move, your body doesn't do that funny thing that happens with the backgrounds, right. where you're kind of uh, meld in the, into, the, into the background. But with this one, it doesn't happen. It's really cool. And then the center of the torus is like right in your crown. So it could be like passing through your pineal gland or something. It just looks really cool. Mm -hmm. I love these backdrops. I always like playing with green screens and to be able to do this and choose whatever you want in the background. And now they have filters, you can choose a foreground. Do you know about that? No. So, so they have, you can put different pictures behind you and I'll show yeah. you the computer. Let's see. So now you can also change the framing. Ah, cool. Now you're, <laughs> that's so funny. Is that a new thing? Yeah. It's, uh, and I like it because you can, you know, you can, there's so many, you can change what's in front of you. You can change what's back. And without, you know, being in a studio and without being a massive editor, all of us can just change our context, you know, like, I love it. <laughs> the slags. <laughs> Who's in control, me or him? Yeah. <laughs> you, because you're in front and you can change him if you want. You can just like dismiss him. <laughs> exactly. I'm now in charge. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> we have a new cryptocurrency called a Captain Sweep. <laughs> sweeps. It's, called it's, sweeps. Yeah, it's it's the only currency allowed. And if you don't have <laughs> it, you get no snacks. <laughs> no snacks. <laughs> So what should we talk about today? Wait, 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 wait. Something what happened happened here. It just put me in it put me in safe driving mode. Why did it do that? Now I cannot see you. <laughs> I oh, see here, you. here you are. Here you are. Okay. It just thinks I'm in a car because I'm moving too much. We were going to speak about you. We were going to speak. It was your kind of your turn to check in and and tell me everything about what you've been sweeping? Sweeping? <laughs> of all your sweep adventures. You mean I have an audience? Yeah, I'm part of the audience. 
<laughs> well, well, well. I, where do you start? What do I... Uh, always feels like I'm not doing enough, that's for sure. There I seems, can relate. I can yeah. relate. It doesn't matter what you do. At the end of the day, you didn't solve world peace or something. So it's, you know, it was didn't quite do it. Yeah. 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 It's like the, 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 the color of our plants is so bright and beautiful. And then the reality is like a little sketch here and there. Mm. And then, you know, when I see how they produce like these big, huge films with thousands of people and they do all this, like, and I'm doing a website. <laughs> 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 and take months. <laughs> oh. Well, and, and also in those movies, they go from here to there in three seconds when in fact it was eight months and, you know, 100 people amount of work even in the film, you know, and, and it's so we jump from these impossibilities that we see in front of us, but our real lives don't really match. <laughs> yeah these, these great stories we're watching all the time yeah and i was talking more about how they produce them you know mm. like the 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 collective intelligence required to produce those films and integrate people and and then you have this massive amount of animators and you wonder how they create coherence you know to be able to create those animations together and um, so I was thinking of, of, of that, but also granted, they have millions of dollars. So we yeah. don't, I mean, those animators are getting paid good money and they're told what to do and they do it. And somebody's yeah. telling you what to do, right? Well, you know, the challenge of this, of, of that kind of design is that even if you tell them what to do, I guess it's very precise when it comes to film, right? Because when it comes to software development, you can totally easily lose where you are in the development, who's doing what and who needs to do what part of the code and who are is everybody thinking. I mean, that's why I tell you like creating coherence is like as big as creating the goddamn project. Mm -hmm. What tea should I have? Hmm. I'm gonna have a, this one. Your mind blend. Okay, I, I'm going to try to see. I want to show you something. Yeah. Um, so I'm open. I'm having pure mind blend and everything. This is a blending moment. Okay, I'm going to sh share something with you. God, it's amazing how much better the this video conferencing tech tech is compared to when we were chatting. Uh, what did we use? I can't remember. Can you Skype. see? This? We used to we used Skype. I'm not very sure that this technology is better than other technologies, actually. Like, you know, but but for other reasons, not for these reasons. Uh, like screen sharing is amazing for sure and uh drop thingy yeah. can you see my screen i can and now they, let me so yeah i can let's i just let's set a an intention for the meeting or our chat okay and okay we'll, we'll, we'll have a little uh this will be the first use of this this is uh okay I, I was working on a software program that was using these particular card cards to format a chat room so that your chat room would be uh, like it would have a, a goal it would have a conversation type it would have a value it would have points assigned and so it was like look, turning communication into a game and using these as the frameworks so that's what was different of illuminate that you could preset the breakout rooms with content so okay. you could preset different rooms with different decks yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. It's called Illuminate? It'll illuminate, but that was, it, then it became Blackboard. Oh. It was, yeah. Does it still work? I don't know. I guess it's part of that big LMS. It still works for sure. 
Mm. But I don't know if one needs to buy the whole Blackboard learning management system packaging with it, but you could preset the breakout rooms. And not only that, you could keep them open. So you could be moving people from the breakouts without closing them. Okay. And then deciding who you sent what. In that way, you could create a lot of design because you could like do these kind of things. Ah. Yeah. So let's say, here we go again, inspiration, yeah. assessment, experience. Yeah. That's a nice one. Yeah. So maybe assessing, having an assessing conversation of my experience and what inspired me. Yes, I that, like that. That could be a start. And I love that start. Okay, so why don't we... Uh, And you, you know what's cool is, is that we can go back to that and change it, but come back to here. I like that. Even just having that there, let alone, it'd be nice at some point to have it above our heads and you could just press the button and then you change the combo type. Because it, I feel like the, the big change in communication is being able to move from one conversation type to the next. Mm. And uh, wait a sec, let me just do one more thing. <clears throat> don't you feel like in, in 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 none of these i see that they have the creativity to um designate the kind of conversation that you're in right <laughs> <laughs> now take take the movie theater out i want to see the card in the back Okay, so theater out. <laughs> my computer got zapped a couple days ago and my memory is just horrendous now. Do you ever like my, it was like the mind, it was working fine. And then boom, it's, it happened. And I, I think probably my short term memory is gone in some manner. You want to see the whole thing. There. Yeah. There we go. Can you imagine like a talk show where you've got the combo site type you're in and you're interviewing people and you're going from one conversation type to the rest? I did that. Yeah. With, I did that with LaCiel. Uh, in this week's meeting, I was the uh, facilitator and we filled out, I've got a really nice one hour, two hour, three hour session planner that you can change the conversation types for your meeting agenda. So you can look at what you're doing, the content, but then you can also look at what kind of conversation type is necessary. And so we did that as a group first time. I've sent them the combo cards. So they uh, they have that. And then whenever we change the combo type, I change the background like this. <laughs> anyway, it was the first time. And I, I think it's uh, one day it may catch on. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and what's your assessment? What, what well, worked? My my assessment is that I, I'm often I, I'm flabbergasted, I guess, that people have so little interest in conversation types. I, I think it's the breakthrough that's going to change how our species talks. And most people, they're not interested at all in them. A bit depressing, but card sets haven't gone out there though. So I mean that's you know, people need the visual tool. I, maybe it's because, could it be that it's because people don't hold a lot of range for the things that are unfamiliar and maybe communication, um, we tend to flatten communication and not have a lot of breath in it and then putting it within a structure then people just don't know how to hold it perhaps because what i remember of the conversation types that was kind of a half for me was like wow there's all these conversation types like there's you know it's like like how many forms do we have for a relationship or how we name our relationships so you're putting a whole grammar in front of them mm. literally a whole grammar of all the possible things that they can do but it's so new, it's like you understanding the language 
to be able to then communicate is not as easy versus using it with you. But when, so when, what happened when you guys used it, use the conversation types? Well, it, it was more of a, because it's so new, it was, you know, it, it, and me being the facilitator, it was, it was sort of like taking people to a water park and you're kind of opening another gate for people to go down this, this slide, but they're not necessarily thinking about the gate or what you're doing. They're, they go back right. into whatever you're doing and, and there was specific content because like at the beginning, we started with a clearing convo. And it was the beginning of kind of going, okay, is there anything that needs to come out? Any, any shadow that hasn't been touched yet? And that was the first time for us to kind of address that. And, you know, they've been working together, I don't know, two to four years and involved in spiritual things. You, you know, there's going to be stuff to clear. <laughs> there's, there's going to be a, a lot of uh, background chaos. So, I mean, it, again, it was the first time. And I think for first times. Uh, it's like riding a bike. You're not going to have people go on the bike course when they're first time on the bike course. And um, I mean, first time on the bicycle, they have to kind of get used to the bike and get used to using it, and get familiar with whatever they have. So, well, but there's also the road, right? Because, like, if you think about shadow, I'm thinking if if I'm in the middle of a group and suddenly so people would say, "Okay, let's bring the shadow in." Um, as a facilitator, I would have a completely different space holding and creation of the vessel and the container and the safety if I'm going to bring shadow in mm -hmm. and then probably also have a way in which the conversation moves from an arc of bringing out the shadow to certain way of completing with that shadow and coming out with um what is the, that we're seeing and how we're planning to move after like if we're going to see edges mm -hmm. what is our plan to moving from those edges if we're going to check on assumptions you know how we're going to look together into those contradictions what is going to happen with that you know so I, I don't know if it's the same if i could have at the same time or in the same chunk of time too many conversation types i guess i need to play with them well Tell me I, I think what you're bringing in is a really important point in terms of whatever I did was a very shallow glimpse, right? I don't think in your sixth or seventh meeting in Zoom and you've never talked about other things, you're going to go deep in the shadow, right? We're still building trust and we're still getting to know each other. Yeah. And what you're introducing is what is the deeper real clearing and perhaps that as a conversation type just needs it by itself maybe with a healing convo but you can't just jump from this to this and think you're going to get somewhere um, so i think that the conversation types can they can be used as the definer for the event you're moving from a clearing that's just a clearing you spend a whole day doing that and then you're moving into you know some other uh, healing modality or anything else but I think as people get to know each other on a team and use it then it, the speed would change and the and again certain people can process very quickly and certain people takes quite a while so again the context is ever prevalent in, in terms of the assessment and I think you know what I I was recently at a old growth forest blockade and I found the same pattern happening and it was assessment without investigation it's like you know investigation is another conversation type and you know how often do people go into groups or go anywhere and they, they have an immediate assessment they have an immediate judgment of value or immediate judgment of who are these people or what they are and they don't go through a process of assessment. I find that happens with me a lot because I, I bring out tables. I bring out things that are, again, strange or different. And when I do that, and usually it's in strange situations too, the people can't fathom. It's like having an alien come down or the wizard coming out of the forest and, and they, they just, they can't kind of see who I am. And they, and they don't have either the ability or the interest to find out. Because whatever is the weirdness, whatever is that disconnect, is the way they deal with life, like anything that comes into their parameters. 
uh, outside the parameters of their sort of understanding of normal, it just gets cognitive dissonance out. So the having the ability to assess the true nature of people or the true nature of a group and having that as part of the investigation, I think, and I think you probably find that, right? Because I, I think your nuanced understanding of group work is, is at a very high tuning. Yeah, but do, yeah, what I what I hear you say is um, the assessment begins in the moment that you enter the room, but with the assessment of who am I in front of, and who are who who are we? Who am I? Who are you? Um, that who is coming into the conversation? Uh, because that is going to definitely influence the the outcome. And then through that assessment is like also maybe the assessment of of how where is the group in terms of um, their possibility for depth I guess in that given moment you now do they know each other do they trust each other is there a because once that you have the grammar right once that you have like the whole grammar for the conversations and people know them then they can pull it. They can say, you know, I think this is really a time for assessment. I think that this is a time for, you know, investigation, or I, I think we need, you know, blah, 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 you know, so, so shadow time conversation, or I'm not familiar with the, with the conversation types, obviously. Um, but you could then use a grammar to be able to, to, but you have to be familiar with it. So once a group is familiar with it, it could be doing a lot of magic because then even shadow and clearing, you can name it in the eye. Like I could see a group of people that know each other and they say for clearing, let's name name shadow, something that is happening with, within you that feels like a shadow or a niche that you're working with and just have that as a clearing, something that, that might be on the way for your work might be on the way for your presence might be on the way and so you come with that and you clear that way and even that invitation and the modeling of the first one <laughs> as we know if the first person just blows it then you know more difficult to pick but then if the per first person really models it and is vulnerable and offers it to its vulnerability and openness magic can happen in a clearing when shadow is brought in, in the individual level, could probably happen easier than the collective. For sure. So, do we have any? <laughs> Name it. I don't. I don't have any. But I. I. Uh, you don't have any shadow. Well, no. Towards how, how boring. To, towards you. Towards you. Oh, towards me. No, but that, I'm sure that's there was another a... level. That's an interrelational shadow. Yes. No, your own, your own. Oh, my own. Oh, oh. God, I've got time. Um, <laughs> well, I think speaking earlier about that, like in a given day, you never get enough done, or there seems to be this loss of significance that it doesn't matter what kind of work I do. I don't remember what I've done or the significance. The significance isn't enough. And so I sort of, I get depressed that I've never done, that I'm not doing, like there's a constant assessment for me around what I'm getting done. And it's very linked to my emotional nature. And then I can go into these depressions that affect how I work. And then I get less productive and then I get more emotionally down. And, and it's, it's, there's just this constant, uh, self-assessment that's never satisfied but it seems to drive the creativity too um, like a poem a poet you know poets feed from on depression yeah sort of shadow yeah. and depression and or art feeds a lot from that so what the assessment well, I, want to get out I don't know I'm my story is that perhaps is also that um, when the work is not understood and then the feedback that comes back from, from the people, that assessment matters, right? That assessment matters. So if that assessment is, isn't coming, 
a person doesn't know the impact that you're really having. And that happens constantly within organizations, no contexts as well, that people don't know the significance or the impact or, or of what is that they're doing. Mm. And they have to hold their own. You know, mm. you have to hold your own strength, centeredness with that. And it's, it's quite a competitive world. So we've grown up with this no. lack of acknowledgement and lack of encouragement. And deep down, it's, I think that's what we all need, right? We just we need to know we're doing well in some sense. Yeah. In spite, in spite of all evidence appearing otherwise. Well, because life is also about feedback. And the way we learn, it's about feedback. And I found, you know, in um, for for the organization for Unified Field Corporation, feedback is one of our main conversation types. You would say, oh, uh, yeah, because it's like that curricula of growth. For sure. I mean, without the feedback, it's hell. <laughs> I, I find, and. Yeah, and so I spend a lot of time working on my own work alone, so I don't always get the feedback I need. And when I, I, I look for it, it's in Facebook. And oh my God. No, that's a flat world. That place is hell. <laughs> that's a flat world. I wonder if Leonardo da Vinci was working and put his stuff on Facebook and how he would do. But he, he would probably do well because he's quite a good artist. But and it's just weird to see some. What was it? Some guy put a taped a banana peel onto his, I guess, girlfriend's foot. Well, she was quite good looking. And 24 million views. <laughs> and, and to me, I, I put it. It's depressing. It's the, depressing. The, it's the depressing. It's a new paradigm. And I, I'm getting like 10. It's <laughs> depressing. I, I totally get it. I mean, it, it does, it does so moments where the feedback, right? The feedback, what it tells me is like, we're doomed. You know, it's like the feedback is like, it is that bad. We're fucked. You know, yeah. if that's what attracts the attention of individuals, if that's a capacity to hold consciousness is like, you know, the banana peel in the food of the girlfriend for 10 million, that has significance for people uh what are we to do <laughs> unless look at a minority just like the renaissance right like i don't know if, if leonardo was understood by everyone or he was just had to be understood by the renaissance people and there was like what a thousand people or a one percent or a some percent that then with that you you create a, a morphogenic field and and you hopefully leave the best that all of all of us and if not you'll see them fall but it's just it's it's insane it's insane you know, I don't know if I told you this story, but there was like this spiritual teacher that I used to follow called Andrew Cohen. You remember Andrew Cohen? No. He was called the rude boy of spirituality. He was really rude. And he was like super, super like, you could even touch the narcissist aspect of him, but he would laugh at people. And, but he would laugh at ego. And in one conference, he was telling everybody, you are the leading edge of evolution and everybody was like peacocks you know like i'm the leading edge of evolution <laughs> thing and then he says it is that bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're screwed <laughs> we're, we're, we're screwed ya nos cargo el payaso it's in spanish well, I think it just came in Vancouver that we're not allowed to have meetings with more than six people as a new kind of thing that's just come out. And I mean, there's there's no evidence that so that it works. No evidence that the lockdowns work. No evidence of the, the masks work. <laughs> Tons of evidence that the PCR tests don't work. <laughs> Tons. So, so they're getting all these false positives. None of it's true. None of their feedback's true. And yet they're still implementing these psycho things. I know, I know. They closed Lanai because of of uh, two, 20 cases and two people 
that needed hospitalization. I was like, you close a whole island. Uh, but the mental, you know, the mental, sh what, what happens with people around not seeing, right? That big bail and then the fear of, oh my God, but you are so insensitive, Elijah. How could you be saying that people are dying? What do you mean with the lockdowns are not happening? I mean, I can have evidence that the lockdowns are happening. They know the curves are slowing. You know, there's evidence for anything that you want and anything that you want to, to, to be able to preserve your cognitive bias, you'll find evidence for. And, and that's part of the issue that we lost every possibility for civic dialogue and for sense making. Do you have sense making as a conversation, part of the conversation cards? Where do you have sense making? Sense making. Um, I guess that would kind of like be a level within each one of them. I guess right. It, it would be its own axis of, you know, yeah. I mean, the use of reason. Yeah, the capacity to collectively sense for for meaning, for what is true, for direction, for um, choice making, good choice making, uh, derived from good sense making. I mean, it's it's devoid, right? I mean, the, the, to me, there's such a a distancing with politics and the, and the interpretation of reality that they're holding. Like the, the, the divide is, is, is so big now, the polarity is so big and both sides looking at each other as they're insane because they're both in different, such different realities. Yeah. Is that the enterprise, Captain? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So keep telling me about you. So we were in your own self-assessment. Where are you? Where have you been all these years? Where are you now? Well, I guess maybe I feel more like here alone on a ship. <laughs> circling <laughs> circling the earth. Right. I, uh, mm -hmm. I, hey, which one of the Mayan calendar people are you? Jose Arguez's system, which one are you? I disconnected from the Mayan calendar. I would like to reconnect. So you, you can't remember? Oh, I am solar wind, but I don't know. You're solar wind, white solar wind. You're white wind. Okay, I'm going to put you on my board. On the time translator, I have 20 of the Mayan signatures, right? There's 20 of them. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it in my files, Mayan. Calendar. Calendar. Uh, maybe if I search files. So I, I have an assumption that when you make a team of 20 people and each person is using their Mayan sign, that it becomes a superhero team and that it activates our DNA higher gifts together. That that resonates. I mean, it's also part of, of uh, the what they say about the um, human design and hologram and all of that, right? Like if you have all the, that diversity in a spirit of the wind, ick, 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 ick. I don't think spirit. that you really know. Like if I start seeing you as white wind. Okay. Um, and white wind with all these other people, like I'm seeing, you know, people as the white mirror, the blue eagle, and I have them in front of me, but I'm not forgetting because my memory has gone so poor. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's well, I don't really know. It's true. For some reason, I have the Mayan horoscope of somebody else, but not mine. <laughs> Isn't that the funny one, eh? 
I mean, I, I don't really know what to say about where I am. I, I, I find I'm getting a lot less able to speak. My mind is blank. My, uh, my dreams are dead. Um, like right now, I'm kind of focusing on making little videos that I can put together into my first real online course and to really attempt to teach what I've got. And so just starting from the beginning and then doing it step by step to come up with all of this, like, I've just got too much stuff, right? And then mm -hmm. when I should have been getting it all together into a nice package, I was creating more stuff that was unfinished and then I got more stuff. So now I'm just trying to collate and bring it together and kind of get, get things into a form that's of sort of a higher nature. It seems now with perhaps Luciel or other groups that I may actually be working with people. <laughs> that, that, you know, it's funny, like, like I put forward it and then there's, ed, there's still this edge to me of kind of like waiting for them to say, this is stupid or we're not using this or just to kind of dismiss it. And they were kind of like, oh, well, this is interesting. And, you know, being like most humans and being nice about it. And for like, there was just this shock because I guess I've gone through so many situations where it's, it's at some point dismissed or thrown out or never taken into account. And then my pattern of disassociation by slowly fading away at each step of the way rather than actually attempting to do anything about it. But most of the situations aren't like this, like this situation we've been brought in to help them and they want help. Like a lot of situations I've been in, I've been part of a group or part of something, but not looked at as the person that's going to help everyone change something. But I think you know that you need a reputation kind of preceding you to really work with humans. You know, if, if, yeah. they, if they think you're a change maker, they're all open for it. But if they don't know you. <laughs> well, you're a, you're a white male. <laughs> well, these days a white male ain't helping much. <laughs> <laughs> right i don't know i mean it goes still goes far with certain groups i'm not sure we changed our racism systemically uh, yeah well i i've been experiencing a lot of the other type i guess so I, I haven't really felt it working for me on the fringes of society that they, they, they've already sort of given up on the tall bald white savior with the new system They're not interested in new infrastructures oh. at all. That's what I found. I found like the activist areas are just, I haven't been in the right places with my work. I'm still living out the sort of a recluse adventure and not showing people what I got. Basically just staying in my own world and keep refining it having little experiences but not what i'm trying to do now you know come up with a manual you know come up with a sequence of little videos that make sense that everyone can go oh that's what the time translator is okay so i would say that i'm back to zero or 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 uh probably have a lot more humility from experience and a lot more wonderment about how the species is going to get out of where it's going. Like I had, you know, just cause you got the ideas. I mean, there's a lot of people out there with great ideas. There's a lot of people who have the answer but the answer never seems to get into the places it needs to. And I think that's because of, you know the, the larger infrastructure corruption and the, you know, the, the whole old paradigm way of doing things. And a lot of my attention has been <laughs> pointing the finger at what I call the freaking nutballs. And that's kind of getting away from the bankers, the elitists, the 1% or all these other words. Because they, again, it's kind of like a whitewashing, but just give them a name, freaking nutball. <laughs> so everyone can kind of go, okay, I, there seems to be this small group of people who control a lot of things that are insane. And they're doing things that, like this that are insane. And so how do you, how do you, answer insanity with reason and 
you know, that's, that's, I think, the big question these days. Yeah. But if, but if we can't do it, you know, if, if yeah. supposedly the conscious, aware, spiritual people can't do it, how, how is anything else going to happen? And, and there seems to be a lot of you know, competitiveness mm -hmm. or a lot of division, right? I don't know what what have you what wisdom have you attained in working with groups of people other than wanting to work by yourself <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm going to go back to coherence because an alignment, I feel that the, I mean, I like working with people and the people I work constantly with, I, uh, different groups uh, of people or different teams have different challenges. And, um, but I guess that one of the, of the, of the, a coherence touches all of them and constantly going out of alignment and then missing the gaps or not seeing the gaps you know alignment alignment should do definitely be a conversation type or maybe a meta because it's like a and it's one of our main practices for sure in unified field corporation and and on seeing how there when there's a gap in alignment it's easy to bring the people in, back into alignment if you use it from that lens and not wanting to agree in absolutely everything, but just like where are we aligned and where mis are we misaligned so that when we see where we're misaligned, at least we see it and not that we won't work together, but at least we know we're misaligned or that there's a gap there that you believe one thing and I believe another thing and that could be a paradox in some moment. Can we see it? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, that we, we could keep working together, but you cannot expect to change people. You cannot expect to, for, you know, understanding people's naturalness mm. uh, has been big. <clears throat> so like I come in, like trying to discover and see be beyond the question what is the core beliefs that they hold in life and and not by asking what are your core beliefs but <clears throat> through conversation you can easily reveal it like when people have a belief that things are scarce or things are difficult or or life sucks or life's a miracle or you know those core beliefs matter and then you can see if you're aligned to them or someone might be more capitalist than you would want or or you would have a flavor for or you know but once you understand and you see that what is natural on them then then you you start to 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 have a revelation of the pattern of of behavior that you can ex you can expect to see. So you're saying that alignment is kind of focused on beliefs, as the as one of them. You are you align on core beliefs. You align on purpose. You can align on needs, on skills, on perceptions of fairness. You can align on you know. I can show you our 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 practice of alignment and that's one of the practices that I'm looking forward to <clears throat> to have a, te a tool a teaching tool for because I understand it because I've been with um, David for so long and he his main practice for business is alignment and for oneness based business as he calls it is alignment and within that is like core core beliefs needs skills purpose and perceptions of fairness. Um, and I like perceptions of fairness because fairness is, is definitely a perception. <laughs> you know, you could perceive, somebody else can perceive that. I, I, do, I did that and that was perfectly fair. 
And for somebody else, it's like perfectly unfair, the exact same thing. So it's a difference in perception. And with that, he's been, I see the miracles that happen when things get back into alignment. And I developed a little tool to help Holo dot host develop partnerships through alignment by by helping to create like different levels of of um people in in a partnership relationship for example uh, and this could be entering into coventina and onboarding and all those things for example you have people that are networkers right that are great in oh yeah you should meet blah blah they're you and them are doing exactly the same thing and if you listen to the voice of the networkers you could spell your whole time meeting people that you have no alignment with and right. you waste massive amount of hours. So the networker should have a set of tools for alignment that are first level for clarifying purpose, alignment of purpose, for example. And maybe that's it, you know. Once he does that, then go like, hey, you guys are aligned in this and this purpose. I um, There's definitely an alignment there. Then they, you pass it to the, we call it the catalyst. So the catalyst would go like, oh, okay, so there's this alignment of purpose. And the next conversation, you don't have to go back to that. You're already advancing in the conversation, even if it's different people, but you already know the one of the core alignments. Core beliefs, you don't really ask directly. You mostly you mostly find out through through conversation about purpose or conversations about you know the, their business or what makes them feel alive or you know and then you discover the core beliefs but I, I, if you ask what are your core beliefs people, I, I find that people are not able to really go there that easy not all, some of them can maybe sometimes through the lens of yours what is your theory of change it can become a little better to to reveal uh, core beliefs um anyways once a catalyst has them the relationship then goes into are we aligned on needs do i as a can we be partners do i have what you need do you have what i need is there a could there be a reciprocity what kind of reciprocity what skills do you have what skills do i have where do we meet with that because we're looking into partnerships and the ones you got there you go okay perceptions of fairness what feels fair for you in our dynamic and so it's a progression of conversation that by the end, when you go from the catalyst already knows all the alignment levels, it already knows some of the belief system and the core beliefs, it then gives it to the sculpture of the, of the, of the agreement. And the sculpture basically says, oh, this is all the alignment, but he goes deeper into the core beliefs and super deep in the perceptions of fairness to be able to then create an MOU or a letter of intent or a scope of work or, a, you know, whatever, something that you're ready to sign. <laughs> right. So that's, uh, that's a tool that I, I've, I've been learning to use um, through practice, basically, but seen it. Uh, and the, in partnerships in Holo, uh, it, it, we did the tool, the main, the commercial director loved it, but it was complex to, to, to implement. So they dropped it and I dropped it. And in uh, Unified Field Corporation, we use it a lot in terms of with our associates or employees. We sometimes go like, oh, that's a conversation of alignment. So we have alignment conversations. For example, if somebody wants to do a project and has a proposal, we go into an alignment conversation to see if there's an alignment with the mission, with what is that they need to do. Is there an alignment with the resources that it's needed? You know, so it's a tool that we use plenty. But they, well, I still don't know how to teach them the tool. I know how to, I'm starting to learn how to, to pull the, you know hold the conversation to be pulling the different levels but I, I i don't know how i would teach it well it's it's interesting that when you said the purpose needs skills and beliefs and perception all of those are choice lenses 
So, I mean, like there's choice, flow, synergy, and harmony, right? For Ken Wilber's four quadrants, the inner you, outer you, inner group, and outer group. So you're- Say that again, flow. There's flow choice, is, flow. Choice is I. Choice is I. Um, flow inner, is we. No, it's more choice is inner I, flow is outer I. Outer I, yeah. Synergy is we. Yeah. And harmony is they or or the larger it, outer the it. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. So you've got those those are the four primary wheels of the inflow it makes. Synergy, harmony, har synergy, harmony, flow, choice, and flow and flow. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Totally. So, so you're then, you're assuming like the flow, synergy, and harmony wheels are all static, and they're the kind of like the main reference point but the choice is not static in that you are choosing your lenses that you're seeing through but the universal business system is there in the flow the synergy and the harmony but then when they all go onto the card sets they're independent kind of lenses but it's okay you know what, and and then choice flow synergy and harmony are what they're the four main sort of like words or i mean i call them wheels for the inflow matrix operating system. So the, the operating system- and Are the four working. main wheels? Yeah, yeah. Where are they in the back of that thing that you have that, is well, that the time? They the actually, order? you make them, each one of those four goes on to each one of these uh, nine levels of time. This okay, is let's not go there. In terms of time. Let's start small. <laughs> Yeah. Let's, start let's keep in the and it's not small it's a universe already let's keep in in those in those four uh, wheels okay keep going so so you were saying that so, so that needs, and, so, needs and skills and perception not perception of fairness but perception um and beliefs they're all choice here let me yeah let me just uh what else what, what else is there in choice so if you look at this the um okay we got that on random let me see if i can get a that's a nice one focus on so exchange is the choice wheel i mean choice lens so the I'm, I'm seeing that we either need to add or change the uh, to have an alignment conversation because i think you're right there obviously um and then purpose needs skills or beliefs would be on the far right as yeah. a, the choice lens is the blue one yeah and then order would be fairness so you'd have the value yeah. of fairness, yeah. and then you'd have the yeah. conversation type of alignment, and then you'd have purpose, needs, skills, beliefs, and perception. And that would be using the, the languaging to match what you're saying. Yeah, perception is an interesting one because it's always coming from our perception, right? It's like a meta lens. It's like a, there's no way to avoid it. <laughs> so why even name it <laughs> what is that? like the fish are we talking about the water sort of thing yeah yeah so how um i like that i like i you know i always enjoy it i have enjoyed it in the past and enjoy it now um that genius of yours so coming up with that level of um synthesis and organization and i guess that when i see the time thingy translator i don't even know where to enter it my first reaction is like i'm 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 you know it's like i have a culture map for the people that that david and i designed and it's five dimensions and in those five dimensions we have the core activation in the center um which is vision mission values but it's the seed, we call it the seed of uh, whatever, oneness, the seed of oneness. And in the core activation then goes and opens up because it's too, still too abstract. It opens up and then we go to operational beliefs. 
like yeah. organizations are living systems, we're all in the same boat, you know, power of teams, power of the individual. And then we go to more concrete to uh, principles of the organization. Then we go to, we, we named it as value-driven behaviors because we wanted to mention the, the values, but we wanted to say, these are really behaviors, people. And it's about how you behave, not only how you do, how, what you believe, what you believe is nice, right? But the flow matters. The behavior matters. What we see you do is what we were going to go back in, back in it up. And then we have um, <coughs> these disciplines and, and practices, uh, principles, value-driven behaviors, disciplines which is something that we do constantly like meticulous documentation or punctuality and uh and then we have um um the last one is practices 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 so you know it's, it's, it's many dimensions but to be able to implement that uh, in the organization, I mean, I started by, okay, where is a teaching tool? And now I tell them, no, it's not a teaching tool. It's a compass. It's a compass. So I go like, okay, what is in your experience things that you're already doing? And I put the culture map and they go, like, we've been doing this, we've been doing this. So how do you rate that you're doing in all these other things? Oh, no, we're not doing good in this or we're not doing good in that. So helping them, right, to be able to 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 embrace it and it was there was a big confusion because people are so not used to organizations that work actually work culture like we do we're very very emphasized culture and we work a lot in it and so, so that they were very confused because the culture map is a culture no the culture map is not the culture so i even stopped using the word culture because it was very confusing whenever there was something fucked it's the culture that it's fucked. And it's like, no, damn, it's you. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, you know, they were blaming the culture. But the, the culture is, just, is, is us, right? It's how we enact our reality. There's no, there's no, I could put all the principles I want, but the culture is going to be its own thing. Culture. How would I define culture? What is it? Kind of like the, uh, the matrix of possibility and probability within the parameters of your context, kind of thing. I like that. <laughs> like that <laughs> that repeat it for me well a matrix of probability and possibility within some kind of defined context because it, it's sort of like certain cultures will allow certain things but they won't yeah. allow other things there's a big yeah. thing in culture is what's yeah. allowed and what isn't yeah so in a business a matrix of thing. probability and possibility within a given context of course of course, and the context could be as reduced, reduced or as big as every single individual belief systems in the room, right? Yeah, like if you're looking at a, a marine center has a culture, city has a culture, a country has a culture, even a family has a culture, but um, it depends on the breadth of the context you want to look at. And I think, you know, context and perspective, I think in systems thinking are just huge words, right? Like they're, yeah. they're, they're defining kind of what you're seeing, what you're talking about in, in, in such a manner that, I mean, those are two words I use a lot. Yeah, yeah. But what do you think about, like to other people, your language or languaging becomes very strange because it's so, specific you know you're probably playing with two really important 200 very important words that other people maybe don't play with much and then you're right then to teach them this the meaning of these words and you understand the meaning and the connection but for other people these words can almost mean nothing i would like to know what 
what that those are because for me they're so normal um i don't know if i could even identify what you're saying what would be my assessment it would be i i acknowledge that you like and, and if i speak economics or currency that's worse because nobody defines currency the way we do um and so to design currencies, I need to start by teaching them the, a language, you know, like really the grammar. <laughs> Let's start with grammar lessons and then we move from there. Um, in terms of the culture, like, are you saying that because of what you just were hearing me speak or because you know me from the past? <clears throat> well, I, I would just say both, but in terms of your consultant or your uh... If you're a knowledge worker, right, you're, you're kind of, you're working with the knowledge you have, you're working with your lexicon. Yeah, the thing is that what helps me is that I'm steady with a group of people. Like I have a year, almost a year and a half working with these four main people in Klamath Falls. I mean, I'm telling you, Michael, the culture we're building is working with the janitor. I mean, he, he understands it. I mean, he's not only the guy, he's a sanitation guy. He's, but he's a simple person, you know, he's a simple person with a simple life, with a simple home, with a simple set of, 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 of uh, he's not here to save the world. He's here to make a salary and he's a good worker and he really loves farmers, right? Uh, but that's it, right? And, and it's very simple. And so um, they've been learning certain things of language with me, but they definitely try to not use a lot of jargon with them. Um, that's why I eliminated the word. It's so funny. I started speaking with self about self management with them, because we are designing within some of the principles of deal organizations and self management. It's part of that, and we're developing software for that. Um, and it, it didn't work because they would interpret self management as I do the or whatever the fuck I want. And that did not work. And so I, I dropped it. I dropped it. But they didn't. And they, they keep working towards that ideal. And now they know what it means, but the four of them. But when I added more people, because we've expanded and contracted, <laughs> we were like in that, in we're like 15 people in the team total. But I have contractors and I have that have a different consciousness than the associates. I'm talking unified field corporation, right? So that's one team. The other team that is constant for me is Coventina Foundation, which is my meeting that I have every Friday in half an hour, 27 minutes. And that's Arthur Brock, uh, which is very sophisticated. And Eric, Eric Gautier, who's also very sophisticated and, and Steven, Elling, Steven Ellinger, who's also very sophisticated. So with them, I can use any language I want. <laughs> and if they don't get it, they'll ask. Uh, but a tool will definitely help us or help me, for example, with Arthur or reveal certain things that I know that we don't go into because we don't create the space for. Um, anyways, so, and we were speaking about onboarding projects. How do you onboard projects? How do we help them accelerate? How do we work with them? I guess it might be something similar with Le Ciel. I would like to know what they're doing, but uh, in terms of... Um, I understand that they're working with 13 projects or something like that you yeah. can you can share with to me with me um but we are picking up a certain number of projects to work with and uh, actually that's not true we don't have a limit of 13 or one or three or we just and we're not there yet we're we're right now designing the uh, how the onboarding is going to be um and my other group is common sending, but the common sending works so close to holo and holo chain that then there it's the diversity. Uh, in common sending, it's only two of us, two women, me and Emma Line Friedman. And <coughs> in um, the common sending works close to Coventina Foundation, we're kind of their arm for some of the functions that they don't want to do, we do. Uh, and we help people, we, we're supposed to be, we're not there yet, 
helping projects accelerate and to help them understand things, even like their paradoxes or, you know, how do we move together? And as an echo, our mission of both Comentina and Common Engine is to evolve and develop to the, the, the holochain ecosystem. Uh, you know, the app ecosystem and, the, and to design currencies for the for universal human needs. And, and those things then allow us for us to, you know, go and connect with the groups that are already doing a lot of tech with Holochain, like Commerce, Hilo, Junto, um, Market Organic, um, Hypergroup. I mean, there's several. And then what we need to do is to assess where they're at and then see also assessment would be what does and how what what is a minimum viable ecosystem if an ecosystem is a set of relationships or that evolve over time or how would you define ecosystems um in terms of social ecosystems if it's a set of relationships evolving over time then how do we evolve over time together and and how what is meta? What is what is tools that can help these groups evolve together? How they can do sense making together? Of what is that that they can that they need to succeed? Um, you know things like that. Long answer, mm. very confusing, <laughs> and, and very much in alignment with how humans operate. I mean, is, isn't that one of the the hardest parts is the, the human factor. We can make our maps and we can design our systems. Yeah, but yeah. The individual nuances of each individual. Yeah. And their inner world. Absolutely. That's why oh, Unified Field Corporation for me is the place where most fun happens because I de we declared it, David and I declared it as a de deliberately developmental organization at EDO. So yeah, we want teal organization and self-management and all these harmony things, <laughs> right? Wait, um, DDO, is that your own classification? No, no it's a classification of, uh, uh, it comes from development psychologists, Robert Keegan and Lisa Lasglow, Lasglow or something like that. And they've been doing uh, work uh, for change for a long, long time. They have a book called Immunity to Change. They have another one called uh, Everyone's Culture, where they name several examples, like four examples that they track of DDOs, like, for example, Bridgewater, uh, which is the biggest hedge fund in the world. They are a DDO. And so what conforms a DDO is that people accept of the bat that here you're coming to work your shit. You're not going to come and just think that you're going to do the mission. No, the mission is it's a personal development work that you're paid that you're paid that you're paid to do, but you'll have to do your work. So when people where we onboard people, I ask them, are you avail are you able to risk transcending your limitations and working with them because this is what you're going to do here. And if you, if you don't agree, then it's going to be painful. So what do you want? And they say, yeah. <laughs> and when their shit comes out, then I go like, you remember when I asked you that? Yeah. Well, now's the time. Time to work their shit. <laughs> and, and um, we know we call it edges, not your shit. We call it development edge. So we're, we're using that language in a way that then people start to make it familiar that they do have to work with their edges and that they all have, we all have development edges and that everybody in the organization should be able to give feedback to anyone, CEO, CHO, doesn't matter. In, there's no meritocracy of ideas. Anybody can say there's ranks for sure. But we are trying to not put supervisors or management in, uh, and not middle managers for sure, um, and try to make it way more distributed um, with the people that work on site. With the people that were distributed, like the contractors, is more difficult because they work more isolated. But we definitely don't shame and blame people, and we we work with, a lot with vulnerability. 
and, I, you're, and you're the designated sort of synergy officer? I'm the harmony officer. Harmony, oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't want to put one of my terms on you. Harmony is outside the system for me. Synergy is inside the system. I know, it could have been the chief synergy officer. Maybe I'll change it. Because, it well, actually, actually, you know what? I like this. I'm both because I work on the tech stack and I work on a lot of the marketing, the branding, the, the system level, for sure. You know, the project management, the, the you know, the protocols, architectures for that. Well, that's that synergy too, for synergy. So I could, you know, when I reflect Chief Harmony Officer, people think, oh, she does conflict resolution. <laughs> Well, for me, harmony, it, it, what resonates from when you call it in the level of the it, in the level of the systems, is that for me, harmony resides in the system. And, and uh, you know, the basis of good economics creates harmony. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the definition I use is the greatest connection and separation between parts. And then synergy is like the parts being combined in such a way that the energy of the whole goes to those parts. So it's synergy and harmony to me are, are interlinked, but harmony is kind of more with the placement and the, you know, get, you know, sometimes you don't want to be too close and sometimes you don't you want to be far away kind of. And so it's, they're two interesting words, right? I mean, there's a lot of different definitions for sure about what they are. Well, because you can, you can to, to be able to create harmony, you definitely need to influence in the system level and create systems that result in harmony. Yeah. Um, so you do need to be separated from the parts because if you're too embedded in them, you lose a certain sensitivity or subjectivity or objectivity you know more like subject objectivity or you know and you need to be able to to be in a systems thinker capacity more than in a you know embracing encompassing i guess harmony would be more masculine oriented while synergy would be more feminine oriented you think i guess so sounds good I mean, maybe the, the feminine aspect, aspect is wanting to bring people together. The male aspect is wanting to keep them farther apart. So it's kind of like expansion and concentration, right. working together right. for individual right. collective. There's two geckos mating in front of me. Ah. Get a room. <laughs> what is the universe saying? <laughs> <laughs> They're so beautiful. So what would what is next? Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. What is next? Tell me. Yeah. Tell me well, what is next. I guess my big next is to create the how to design your ideal job. Uh -huh. that, this would give the pieces to start building, let's say, things. Um, I did have a goal of creating a shared knowledge community this year, but it's such like 144 people, like that's a massive man that's like Lucille right like I mean I've, I've sort of given so you up. you 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 wanted 144 people well the shared knowledge community has 12 teams of 12 it has a structure of 144 people okay so to actually create one like I see that as the cell for the new paradigm I see like we need a new organizational structure that's totally different from the corporation and NGOs and, and co-ops of everything from the old paradigm now, when it when it comes down to it, like to manage or to to design something where you, you're going to have to interact with 144 people, you know that's that's a big that's, a, that's just, big that that challenges the collective intelligence principle of number, and probably also the one of distance because you won't have it have them all in the same place. <clears throat> Yeah, it depends on whether it's going to be online or offline or a combination of both. But I just find like I, I have a lot of massive ideas and then I sort of put away with doing the pieces of getting them going. And after 25 years, you're, you're kind of, you have a bit of a, 
reflection about your your own abilities to fulfill your ideas. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe you drop them, get new ones. You know, I don't seem to do that. I just seem to get my head against a wall and just keep on pushing. Um, I know. So, what is your assessment? And I, I need to go soonish, but what is your assessment about uh, Captain Sweep? Well, Captain Sweep's got the very secret plan. He's he's very close to having the 20 people together and having the, the format for bringing this idea. Like, I mean, the thing is that certain things have been worked out like to minute detail, but I've forgotten them, right? Like Captain Sweep's got, he's figured out the plan, but he can't remember the plan. But at different times, a new part of the plan comes up. So imagine, you know, somebody spending 25 years on a plan. You know, like most people will spend a month on a plan, bring it into the world, spend a year on a plan, bring it into the world, but no one spends 25 <laughs> years on a plan. And then, you know, what happened with your life, man? Like, like I guess I've come to the point of like exasperation with myself or like kind of like you, you, or even like seeing the blueprint of something and then the ship is being built and you're watching the ship being built and you almost can't comprehend because there's such a big difference between the blueprint and the ship and then the people got to get on the ship and, and supposedly you're the captain, but maybe you're not the captain. Maybe you're just the architect of the stupid ship and why do you think you're the captain? But you're, you're trying to build something. You're trying to create something that doesn't exist. And you're looking at the world. Yeah. And like, well, you guys, I mean, the world right now is insane. You know, why not try building something new? And so I been putting forth this idea through Facebook, you know, which is again the living hell. Yeah. Yeah. At least for me. It's living hell also because it is not working on your favor. No. 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 I don't see your posts. No? I don't see you. And I'm I, posting I, tons. I mean Facebook, I think... Facebook doesn't show me your posts. Oh wow. That's why I don't see you. Oh, granted, I don't get to Facebook very often. I'm less, less more and more so. Uh, but also I see, you know, the algorithm will work in favor on whatever it is that they want. I mean, the problem, one of the issues is not that the part of the centralization issue is that they're really controlling what we see, what we don't see, what we learn, what we don't learn, what's real and what's not. And, and, and that, is exhausting that's the what does the part that for me is a killer of that motherfucker yeah i don't like it we should build something else so um proposal should we continue next friday i i will i'd love to if you'd like to i will i will continue you know i don't know actually next friday not true next friday i'm gonna i'm have to break our our little pattern here um i would love to when i'm here to meet with you fridays i would really like that because it's a good moment from us no, normally i don't start work until an hour later uh -huh. but friday because weekend is coming and it it just feels a good moment to reconnect with you and i feel that there's so much that we're just like little scratching the surface and and little deeper things can emerge but right now we're kind of re-encountering each other. We're, you know, let's play with them. Let's bring the conversations in. Let's see ourselves. I'm open. I'm really open. I, I, I am. Uh, I need, I, I, I want, I don't need, I, I want tools. I want to see, I want to see what is possible um, with what you're creating, with what I'm creating. And I have no clue. I have hints that I can mentally project but that's not what I want, you know? I, I feel like I, I really need to understand first and sit down and then meet with you. Um, I travel, I'm gonna go to the mainland. Um, I leave Wednesday. Mm. I leave my island, ah, but I'm gonna go see my daughter and then I'm gonna see, so Friday I'm gonna be with my daughter all day that I haven't seen and, it, and eight, right now it's eight, no, it is. It would be eleven, right? That's part of the time. Uh, so I let's regain meetings when I come back. But I'm okay. gonna take about a month. Okay. And and yeah. maybe if if somehow you can squeeze something in in between, I'll be open. Uh, but okay. if not, we can. Okay. Uh, 
I like that. I li actually, I will. I will. I will be able. I probably will be able. I just don't know how because I don't have where to go. I don't know where I'm going to stay. You know, I am uh, kind of a bit in a, in a limbo moment of uh, okay. I'm, I'm just going to go. I'm going to go to the mushroom farm and I'm going to be there um, for a little while. But I don't know if I'm going to lead that workshop with Arthur and then I'm going to be with Arthur for about a week and then around the 20th I shift gears um, of November and then I'm going to be more either just present with my daughter and in the mushroom farm with her or traveling back to to Oregon and um, training people and I, I really don't know I really okay. don't know okay yeah but yeah, but I, I appreciate the reconnection and I appreciate, I would love to keep getting more intimate and, and more intimate. Maybe it's a time to get my cards. Could be, could be. I, I need to, I'd like to send you ones that are already cut. So I, I think I'm probably gonna do a first printing of 20 sets sort of thing. So maybe you can ear, be earmarked for one of them. And uh, we'll go from there. Here, Mark. Yes. yes. Special. Very special. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wonderful to see you. Wonderful to see you. Thank you. And we shall see you when we see you. Hopefully soon. Yes. Hopefully soon. Yes. All right. Bye. Much love. Bye.